Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. And together we form this crazy dynamo mm. known as the Un Unpanders. No, sir, we don't pander. Yeah, especially not to younger viewers. If you're under 18, please get your waiver signed and come back. Yeah, go listen to some tinier podcast that doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We care. Also, if you're an employer, you cannot use this podcast against me, please. Only because it's for infotainment. <laughs> yeah, it's for fun. Entertainment purposes only, I believe no, it's called. Yeah, nothing can be used against us in a court of law. Mm -hmm. So what would you say we do here again? We like to fit in the groove and just flow. First yeah, out in conversation. It, let it rip. A couple old friends just going over some really interesting stuff. <laughs> So why don't you tune in? Uh, Enjoy. Thanks, folks. You made a. You were making a, a graphic in the beginning, so I left it up, and then I forgot about it while I was pouring my beer, my beverage. That's quite alright. That's a. It's a good beverage. Yeah. Well, oh, another episode, another day, another <laughs> less dime. than a dime. <laughs> less than a dime. Yeah. Here we go, making money the way I thought I would. I kind of knew I would make money this way. I don't know. It's just a calling in my life. I do feel Less like I, I'm going to run into like celebrities and they'll know me somehow. I'll yeah, be wait, like, wait. <laughs> we have 20 subscribers. Yeah. Oh my God. Beyond Panders? Yeah, why? Oh. Selena? I love Taylor? <laughs> Ariana? <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> hey. Ariana is a recurring name in your <laughs> name in YouTube. I've got uh, some, uh, search. That's some interests. Saying. Yeah, it keeps popping up. Huh? It was popping off, pop, pop, pop it off, popping off. Mm. 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 We're going to talk about uh, <laughs> Halloween tonight. Night is about fear and Halloween and scares mm. and all sorts Horror. of mm. creepy things. Ooh. Oh my God. So if you're under 18, you won't be doing any tie on. Hey, hey, <laughs> come out and something. Probably play. Probably. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Tonight, we're going to get in a little bit of. um. Halloween, as it's often referred to in North America. Uh, we're going to get into a little history, a little bit of some monsters. So if you're really scared, you might not want to tune in. We're going to get into some of the causes of fear. Psychological, physiological, physical, mental, erotic fear. Ooh. I'm talking about all the big ones. <laughs> all the big ones. And then we're going to get into fear in general. And hell, My it's kind actually of fear. Kind of, it's kind of exciting. Thrill seekers. It is. We all want to play video games that make us afraid and watch movies that make us afraid and just mm, go to parks where kids are and just <laughs> make them afraid and be fearful and this, make them fearful this is one of the Woo! topics where i just like i started reading stuff and i just kept going and going and going and going and i have the most hole? the most links i've ever had researching it mm -hmm. but i didn't really read them because they're just like bringing back memories of watching a b and c hmm Maybe I'm so you're, oh, yeah. you're going to talk about historical origins. Hmm. About, we'll start with Halloween because that's kind of like where. What about the fear. real, the real origin? The first time you were fearful as a child watching something on TV. Are I accidentally a... saw we had VHSs. We used to record TV. Uh huh. And the most popular one we had we had Short Circuit Two, Ghostbusters Two, which we were allowed to watch but probably shouldn't have been, mm -hmm. and Poltergeist Three was on it. Ooh. Poltergeist. And, and that movie was like, I think over the top and cartoonish mm. if you were an adult. But I was like six or seven and it really was creepy. I'll say Poltergeist 2 had a scene where the kid had braces. I no, I didn't see. I saw one and three. I didn't see two. Well, the braces start growing out of his mouth and wrapping around his head and then it, it engulfs him, all the metal, and then it engulfs his dad and it starts to get closer and closer to a circuit in the wall. Oh, oh, it was scary. Yeah, I remember that, even though I haven't seen it for 20, maybe even 30 Poltergeist years. One, there's a scene where the camera guy goes in the bathroom, and the light in the bathroom turns, like, red. And then he looks in the mirror at himself, and he can't. It's like he's compelled to grab his face, and he oh, starts ripping off chunks of his skin and putting it into the sink. <laughs> and he keeps doing it faster and faster until he's just like a skeleton. And then, like, he blinks, and he wakes up, and it didn't happen. But, like, that stayed with me for a long time, and I was like... Oof. That's awesome. Oof. That's not awesome, dude. That's creepy. <laughs> it freaked you out. Creepy scares me more than like the uh, 
Ah, monster. Jump ah. scares, yeah. Jump scare. Oh, my God. Oh, my heart. It just it spiked for a hot, a hot second. Whoa. I'm scared of that kind of movie. No, I'm scared of creepy movies, creepy-ass movies. If you're a creepy-ass movie and you're watching the podcast, turn it off now. Don't want a creepy-ass movie follow. I don't want it. <laughs> Unsubscribe. I don't, care if they, I don't care if they donate to the Patreon. Not welcome, the creepy-ass movie. Donate to the Patreon. <laughs> I thought you were anyway. going to lean towards, uh, like, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Which, no, those, that's, like, cool scary. That's, like, But that was, like, scary. one of the first influences, right? I mean, that started around 90, let's see, 95-ish? I mean, I used to watch it. They would sit around the campfire and tell the put the sand, the sand, they would and then you like blow up a little bit. Yeah, it was kind of a that's kind of a really great idea for a show back in the day. It was actually some of them were pretty good. Do you remember any of them? Yeah, uh, the recurring character was a real heavy set guy. He's in a lot of stuff. That saw dough accent on the dough, no Mister. <laughs> that was what he would say all the time, and I never got the joke that like. It's just Sardo. I'm not Mr. Sardo and like accent on this. I just thought he was a goofy, creepy old, as you said, dude. Any like any of I don't the, any other and no episodes? Was it Sputnik in that one? Who? Um, Some of the actors like who really, when you think about it, that role was like nothing. It's like you just sat around the campfire for a few minutes and then the story unfolded, which had totally probably different actors and characters. And... Yeah, it, it rotated. And there were like right, six so... seasons of it. Right, but I mean, I feel like one of the campfire people is like Butnick from Camp. Uh, I forget what it was called. Oh, Salute yeah, your shorts. Salute, or, I think he was in it. Or maybe it was someone else from Salute Your Shorts, or someone from like Hey Dude was in it. Like I, I love how so. I love how growing up as a kid, I didn't realize an actor could be on more than one show. You could, yeah. You, so, there were different people somehow. Right. I'm like, no, nah, that's not him. He's in Hey Dude. It's like well, it's him. He's in both. It's like no, he's in Hey Dude. <laughs> you know. Shorts. Yeah. Do you remember any of the episodes though? Like there was no. I was I was saying not really. There were two that I remembered from lead, from reading through the article about all the mm-hmm. episodes. Uh, there was one. <laughs> the list so you of didn't episodes. remember. You just read. But anyway, uh, it yeah. jogged. Well, your well memory. when I well, yeah, jog my memory. Okay. Jog your memory. Yog. Yog. Uh, yog. I yog all the time. It's not like that. in my mind. Um, so there was one about a kid playing uh, a pinball machine in a mall, and he yeah, plays hours it. and he gets sucked in. Sucked or in. Yeah, there you go. Course, See these yeah, things like click sucked into a machine. Of course he does. Good lord. And then I remember towards the end, he's standing at the top of an escalator, thinking he's about to leave, but then he's stuck inside a pinball machine. It like zooms out. Oh yeah, the escalator is part of the pinball machine, mm-hmm. and he's in a mall pinball machine. And yeah. whoever we thought he defeated is like laughing and playing the machine, or sitting outside of it, or something. Yeah. Yeah, did did they all end creepy like that, or usually they ended good, right? They kind I think. of are for a, a child's, you know. Campfire. No, but like, because I feel like a lot of them had this ending where they escaped, they learned their lesson, and they won't do X again. They won't travel down to that cave by the river, and I feel like a lot of them were like that. But maybe there were like five or seven who were probably by the same writer. We could probably figure it out. <laughs> who is we're that writer? Do... Let's interview that guy. Right. Are you afraid of the dark writer who had all the dark endings? You're sick, dude. You're real <laughs> You're sick. You're messed up. You're a sicko. You're a sicko. It's probably one writer, right? Probably. Do you remember the lizard people one? They go to a boarding school and they're feeding them strange sponge-like desserts. Uh-uh. And they go down to the basement. I remember there was like a, a swimming pool filled with eggs and like glowy, goopy green stuff. No. Remember that one? That one was good. And it's then, weird. Uh, that movie, that show didn't scare me at all, but I think I took it with a grain of salt because it was a TV show. So production wasn't as high. That's true. Like when I see a movie, you know what I mean? Like inadvertently. not I wasn't like, huh, production isn't as high. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Can you imagine if <laughs> I like, was? I'd be the most pretentious kid in the world. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think like it didn't, it just didn't scare me. But talking about it right now, that sounds scary. That would freak me out. Yes, it's freaky. And there huh. was one uh, I watched today, actually. That I, I read. And I gets into the role on <laughs> MVP of the show, folks. Let me tell you. I watched it because there was it was about hockey. And there was a guy on my hockey team named Jake the Snake. And I always thought, like, it, it rhymes. It sounds good. And he was slippery like yeah. a snake. He was but slippery like a snake. They made an Are You Afraid of the Dark with Jake the Snake in it. And the guy trades uh, his poor hockey skills and his physique for a, a hockey stick that will score. 
and Ooh. he literally turns into a snake. Oh. Until his friend well, saves him. Oh. Uh, does he gradually turn into a snake? Like, does some man get scales yeah. or something? Yeah, he's okay. like, you should check out that rash, it, and he's, like, just... peeling off his oh. forearm. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and he's hmm. scoring goals like mad. Hmm. And he's being all cocky and stuff. <laughs> But yeah, Jake the Snake on my hockey team. Apparently, people copied it from Are You For The Dark, and I never realized it. Wait, that's what he was called that for? Mm-hmm. That's After what we the call- fact? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a coincidence. I'm, I'm missing like all the inside jokes that probably people made about him like finding a hockey stick or like talking to somebody uh-huh. borrowing a hockey stick. Yeah. It's like that guy and on the bench. You figured it out somebody. tonight, huh? That's yeah. pretty cool. I, I wonder if that it. happens your whole life. Like you realize, like I guess I'm realizing right now how creepy and... Are you afraid of the dark is? Yeah, there's years. a lot of dark stuff in there. I didn't know. There was one riddle. Uh, it was like the first riddle I ever figured out. It was the Sardo guy. And he just says, put something in the basket that makes it lighter. Uh, oh. It cannot be seen. And it's not something. I forget how the riddle goes. And I was like, uh, and the kid was like, a hole? And I was like, yeah, a hole. <laughs> and like it occurred to me like that was the coolest thing ever that riddle you're putting a hole in the basket and it's lighter and you can't see a hole and my mind was blown i was like this is the best riddle ever <laughs> and meanwhile yeah. it's probably been like told multiple millions of times multiple millions of ways but i mean it's a great great day in my with, life with anything right yeah, you put a hole in something, right? Yeah. Or are you talking about riddles? Riddles and being told oh. multiple, multiple times over and over again. Yeah, Retweet. you can just change the animal, changing the story. Retweets, faves, hit our like button, subscribe to the Unpanders. Oh, um, check all our socials. Just please give us some money. I don't care. Hmm. Don't. I actually dare them not to. So Halloween. I, I don't dare them to do that. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> October 31st. Hmm. Precedent to November. Uh huh. Because November 1st. No, you're actually way wrong. Good thing I got here in time. Good thing. October 31st. Hallows in. November 1st, the next day. All All Saints Saints Day. Day. Used to have to go to church or at least be off from school. It's a holy day of obligation, Mm -hmm. folks. Obligate that day off after Halloween. Mom, Dad, I can't go to school. I'm counting candy. November 2nd. Did you have off every day after Halloween? I don't think we did. You should have. That's a shame. That's a holy day of obligation. You want to talk to the Pope about your school. <laughs> Let's get that school closed <laughs> down. Yeah. Shut them down. Anyway, November 2nd is All Souls Day. Oh. So the whole e- idea of these three days, it's called All Hallow Tide. It's a three-day event. Hmm. It's it's a celebration of the dead and the saints who were referred to as hallows, hmm. martyrs, and my favorite, the faithful departed. Hmm. I didn't look it up. I just know it's often said in church. And quick shout out to the faithful departed. Because they're not dead. They're not saints. They're not martyrs. They're faithful departed. So like the unfaithful departed means they went to hell? Is that what? And I, I'm not really sure. Someone in the clarifications, please fix that for us. We'll oh, I, send you all our money. I will mention a quick clarification from last time. That song, please do. Uh, Meredith Brooks, bitch. Uh huh. I'm, I'm a, a lover. I'm a saint. Yeah. I'm a bitch. I'm a mother. I'm a mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. child. I'm a yeah. I'm a... I think you you had misidentified the artist. I just want to clarify. It was Meredith Brooks. Wow, you were right. I was right. Did you say Meredith Brooks before I said it was Alanis Morissette? Mm-hmm. How embarrassing for me. <laughs> yeah, I can feel the shame. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the redness um, in your cheeks. <laughs> <sighs> it's the white light from the monitor. Yeah. Moving on. Halloween began because um, uh, Gaelic and Celtic traditions. Um. I want to say this is 13th century, 16th century. I'm sorry. No, 13th century. I was right. I was right the first time. Okay. They borrowed from a couple pagan holidays, the Sanheim and the Bythonic pagan festival. Sounds like fun. It's hard to even say the words. I'm pronouncing it wrong, but that's fine. The Christians keep stealing holidays here. Anyway, that's, I didn't find this anywhere, but the Christians stole all the Christmas stuff, right? Uh Uh-huh. They were all pagan things. I'm finding out Halloween was all pagan stuff they stole. 
So my guess is, and I didn't do a report on this, I didn't do any research, competing but I think, not even competing, it's 13th century, Christianity is kind of boring. I mean, like, what do they have except the book and, like, some stories and stuff? I think they were like, we're missing out on the parties, the, the traditions. Think, yeah. Why don't we just take them and make them ours? And A, it'll get people talking. B, it's like ours now. And C, it's ours now. Yeah, plus so, people who are participating in the festivities, they say, well, let's do the Christian festivity rather than the pagan boom. one. Hell yeah. The and they're still one. doing their – and they're still having fun, right? And you – I mean, for some reason, the pagan – the word pagan has, like, a negative connotation for me. It does. And I think that's it does, given to us. We, yeah, we're raised that way, and I think that's wrong. I think the pagan pagan is just like a different type of religion. And I think not, pagan's just non-Christian, non, non-Christian, yeah, non-God fearing, I guess. So I don't um, think it has a connotation. It just was given to us. But anyway, um, Halloween was quite literally um, all Halloween, which was all Saints' evening. But the way they wrote evening back then was like Ian. It's like E apostrophe Ian. Ah, it's Ian and baby. Or they they cut out the v. v, right? Even. They did so. So then it became all Halloween, and then it was like Halloween, hey Saint evening. So it's like the night before All Saints Day. I Hot really want to go ball. back in the past and try to understand them. Be like, what? No, don't. No, no. <laughs> well, like there are still groups of people today you try to understand. And you're like, that's back ass backwards. But they're so do? confident. You you're just like, oh, forget And back it. then, they didn't even have the Google. Can you imagine arguing with someone where, like, you couldn't prove them they were wrong? It's like, no, you, you're an idiot. It's <laughs> this. And they're like, I don't think so, Sonny. You better talk to the minister down the street. And it's like, no, you're wrong. You <laughs> jerk. I hate you. <laughs> but um, the reason it all, they, they stole it from the whole tradition, the original pagan use of it was because it was the end of the harvest, and there was a belief that the winter was coming and that when winter was coming, evil spirits lived Start more in the run. darkness. Yeah. So mm. They were closer to the earth. And the idea was you would actually on this three day festival, you would put food or drinks out on your front doorstep as an offering. Hey, evil spirits, uh, the dead that have or come before people. me, yeah. Yo, please take it and leave me alone. You're probably just hungry. You just want some bread. Here's some bread. Have mm-hmm. some bread. Leave me alone. They'd leave your livestock alone. They'd survive the winter. All good stuff. You have to leave um, a, a chair in your house alone for a dead person in case they wanted to sit there. I was like, okay. Huh. That's creepy. But yeah. So that's where like these creepy <laughs> things are coming in. And around 16th century Ireland and Scotland, right when they were bringing in all these new traditions for the Christians, they would do guising. Mm-hmm. Where you would disguise yourself. And then go house to house singing, and they would give you some of this food. Sounds real friggin' familiar, don't it, folks? Yeah, singing sounds like it's a trick. Ah, another one that was really crazy. I don't know if it was Ireland. It was like they would dress up in like like scary stuff and just stand outside your house, and like you would give them stuff so that they wouldn't do anything to your house. Yeah, like the poor people were about to don't. <laughs> don't hurt my house. It was like the purge. It was like, like they're about to riot. Have yeah, it. have it. Okay. And people were like, "Yay!" But they wore masks, so you couldn't tell who was who. I, I actually read. Scary. I wrote down this quote. Um, and then whatever this was, Ireland, they entered houses to dance uninvited, mm. or would come in your house and play dice in silence. That sounds scarier than regular Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of people just pushed into your house. And started playing dice in the corner, and you were like, "Hello, who are you?" And they just kept playing and ignoring you. I'd be like, "Okay, okay." That's like it's Have always sunny with the Vietnamese time. guys down in the basement playing gambling. Oh, yeah. Dan and Devito's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "They do." Did somebody lose a <sighs> finger, and then he's like, "Oh, we gotta cut this yeah, out." <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't he? no, no. Um, someone lost at Russian roulette. They really had to shut it down. So the last thing I looked up in history was pumpkins. How the frig did Ooh, pumpkins jack o' lanterns? Did you get into Jack? I did. Oh, so Jack. It's an old wives' tale from the 13th century, I believe. He deceived the devil. He tricked the old devil. He tricked him into uh, getting into a tree. I guess I'm not really sure if he said devil. If you're really so powerful, take over this tree, mm-hmm. possess it. <laughs> And as he did it, old Jack 
carved a cross into the tree, and the devil was stuck inside. Mm. <gasps> devil said, let me out. I'll give you anything. I'll give you any friggin' thing. And Jack said, ha tell you what. You let me live my life however I will, and you can't let me in hell. And the devil said, fine, fine. You won't years. have to come to hell. Is that what it was, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. Because he okay. previously tricked him into paying for something, and he kept the coin, which was the devil embodied in the coin. So he got out, and um, Jack drank and smoked and led a lecherous life. Ooh, awesome. Good job, Jack. Good job, Jack. You're not going to hell. Problem is, when he did pass on, they wouldn't let him into heaven. So he went back down, and the devil's like, I'm not letting you in hell. (laughs) (laughs) We made a deal, jackass. (laughs) So he was kind of like roaming in between the heaven and hell, life and death. And did you get that the devil threw a hot, red hot coal? A piece of coal, like an ember of coal, so he could light his way a little bit. Yeah. And it landed in his head or something? Did you read that? I didn't hear the landed in his head part. Okay. Something like he put it in his head or it landed in his head. And that's how we have like pumpkins that are lit from the inside. And uh, I thought it was just pumpkins. he was wandering around with this like ember that was like going out, so he, he would seek he, out other he, lights. Oh, uh, okay. I, that might be more accurate. Could be. Might, be. might be. I don't know. Anyway, um, in the 1930s in America, they started doing the uh, trunk or treating at church and school. Because back then, um. They would still do some of the food stuff and all that, but there was no like candy door to door. And one of the main reasons is that rural America was too far apart. You That's couldn't walk for like six work. hours to a house <laughs> to get another eight pieces of candy, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, shortly thereafter, houses were closer together. Tradition caught more wind. People started going house to house. All the candy corporations started pouring it out like, yeah, yeah, candy. <laughs> Have to give out candy. So it stopped being food and spiced apples and stuff like that and moved on to other stuff. And that's my folks, my friends, my people, Halloween. Swear to G. So The one interesting fact about jack-o'-lanterns is that they weren't always pumpkins. They had, like, turnips and potatoes. Like, they would carve out anything. And they didn't have pumpkins until they came to America. And they're like, oh. So right, because we had so many pumpkins at the time. <laughs> yeah. Let's get these stupid Quite pumpkins literally. out of here. I mean, what is a pumpkin good for when you think about it? Are you looking forward to pumpkin? Anyone? Not really. Pumpkin pie? Usually they Maybe. put something else in it, like sweet potato. You're pushing that even. You look so pale. Oh, you got rid of that page that I was reading off of. <laughs> yeah, I look like a regular person. Oh, my God. Where's oh, all my good. skin? Oh, up? there you go. There you go. I look more natural, though. I look like you're that. about to die. I'm losing all your blood. Uh, Ooh. God bless me. 40. So I wrote down the 10 most popular Halloween monsters because mm. monsters are kind of cool. Jack off a lantern. Jack a lantern. Excuse me. Bats. Bats? Like vampire oh. bats? No, just regular bats. Just regular bats? Like real animals regular that, are, bats. that people are scared of? Yes. Regular bats are associated with Halloween if you're not familiar. True. Bats and spiders. There's going to be a second one. No, spiders didn't make the list. I don't know why. Gargoyles did, which was weird. This is a generic list. You can make yeah. 10. Okay, spiders should. I'm mad now. I'll Gar- talk to the list maker. How? I mean, gargoyles aren't really present anywhere. Like, I've never seen a gar- gargoyle in change. Okay. Yeah. There are no gargoyles anywhere anymore. They were a great WB show, and that's where it ended. The show was ahead of its time. You got to admit. Behind of its time? <laughs> no. well, I guess technically speaking, yes. Yeah. Goblins, witches, zombies, ghosts, werewolves, vampires, and demons. And mm. I thought it's a good list. Yeah. They kind of are the, the Halloween monsters. There are other monsters. And then I got to thinking about other monsters. Yes. Like almost real ones. You know what I'm saying? Real monsters? People like, like things that people are actually scared of. Yeah, that's a good point, because no one's scared of the Halloween ones, are they? Are they like, oh my god, a jack-o'-lantern? <laughs> I, had a, I had a dream. A jack-o'-lantern appeared at our house, honey. Oh, dear. And that's, a tale, that's a tale that's not passed down. I, I didn't know what a jack-o'-lantern was for or why it was there. 
I doubt no. her parents even cared. <laughs> it's like really scared of witches. I know we like some people believe in them, but like that's one of the things that like science just completely abolished. Is that we we know all these things now that witches probably don't exist. I probably. agree. But the next section we're doing, which is like these newer monsters or uh, next wave of monsters, like science should disprove all of them, but it doesn't matter. Hmm. Let me talk about some of the uh, some mm-hmm. of the, the classic monsters from film and media, like Hall- Halloween, Mike Myers. He's not a monster per se, but he is a villain, and he is a uh, in several times more than several. I don't know how many. How many, films. How many, how many Halloweens Halloween. are there? I was I was hoping I think he saw like six seven. or seven at least. Crazy. And when's the new one dropping? Now. <laughs> hope we hit the same night that'd be amazing that would be good but I just love that mask knife he just keeps coming he goes after like uh, what teenage love like, makers yeah love makers and so he's like I, I guess. guess he was bitter because he never had that as a child I'm just assuming wasn't he burned or something worked he terrible disfigured by his family yeah it's the it same thing with like like a Freddy Krueger like he was horribly disfigured. That's the only way. I mean, that's got to be Burns, right? Freddy Krueger is definitely Burns. Jason, some kind of other mutilation. But think about it. The guy never got lucky with the girls, right? Not with that face. Yeah, there mm-hmm. was a frustration there. That's freaky. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Do either yeah. of those bother you at all? No, they actually don't. They don't scare you? The next... No, 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 no. The next one you're going to talk about does scare me. I'm dead, I'm dead serious. Leprechaun. No. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine if I was like, yeah, did you see one? Oh, my God. <laughs> if I were, can you Evil imagine leprechaun. a real fear of leprechauns? Like, oh, my God, what? <laughs> Where? Oh, you got to look down every time. You're like, oh, my God. Oh. That's like six inches tall. They're not six inches they're, tall. They're, I mean, they are leprechauns. I don't know. A foot and a half. And they're not real. <laughs> so, <laughs> I could say they're six inches tall. Do you, yeah, you're right. You can. What's the uh, the news? Report was the leprechaun. Remember that? No, I don't. All the people were describing the, the neighborhood leprechaun. It was in the news. <laughs> no, no, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. So good. All right, we'll have to, I'll have to show you afterwards. It's, so it's like a whole whole community of people reporting. Like yes, this. we're reporting an actual leprechaun, and like it's all these people. And they're like, I seen him run by the Seven Eleven, and he was out back, and I was scared. And then there's like a lady's like. There was something wrong with that little man. He was screaming and running. And then, like, you know, all these people and the reporters are doing, like, a real news report on it. And they're trying to, like, keep a straight face. Um, and then there's an artist rendering of it or something. <laughs> you got you to see it. I'm sure everyone else. It's like a rainbow and a gold pot. <laughs> it's a pot of gold. Uh, anyway. He's not, he doesn't scare me. You know which one actually does scare me? Chucky. No. Uh, creep me out, but I'm over creep. Chucky. Aliens, dude. Uh-huh. Aliens get me, dude. Aliens as in like the uh, the interterrestrial, like green, big eyed, gray black green, black yeah, hair. Area Fifty One eyes, like really big eyes. Like, ooh, ooh. Hmm. I used I to have like that. an irrational fear of them. Well, you know what it is? Like they show up, like they can show up anywhere. Like they can be outside your window, and they like hmm. they freeze you at night, and then like you can't move, and they're just looking at you with the the big scary eyes and they don't talk that's even scarier like if they said i'm gonna get you in like a really cor- corny <laughs> voice i'd be able to laugh but like they don't say anything they're just staring huh there's no pupil like it's they i keep thinking you blink. see behind me it's like part of a joke yeah they don't blink it's like they know stuff you don't know maybe it's an intelligence thing because i'm an intelligent person and there's an, a more intelligent being it doesn't want to even associate with you because you're so want. stupid <laughs> it's just like, I'm an idiot. Huh. No, I'm not even scared of like, and, and I don't do the whole like, I, like I don't go like they're gonna probe my butthole. <laughs> like, that. like I'm just scared of them. There's something creepy about them. Hmm. It's not like sleep paralysis, right? Or the the mare, the, well, de- the demon mare that comes at so, night. So that is weird. I did develop sleep paralysis at one point in my life, and I think it was because of maybe that. I don't know. Aliens. So like the two played fear of being frozen by them and i was literally frozen by them right so when they're they're not probing your butthole but they're doing like <laughs> no no, no i don't they're needling you right or they needle in your brain up the nose i don't i don't Ear? get no no no. in my fear of them i don't they don't get me anywhere like i'm not anywhere hmm. 
I'm in my own house. I just can't move or something. Or like they're looking at me through a window or like, it's just something real creepy and off putting about them. Do you think everyone has like a fear, like a strange fear about maybe something regular? Like your fear is not actually maybe not aliens, but it's being stuck in your house and not being able to do anything. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm. I'd be lazy. Keep looking behind it's you. More like I think you're worried. <laughs> I actually did get goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something creepy about being watched. Maybe. Maybe I don't like being watched. Watched and unable to fight back and all sorts of stuff yeah. where you don't even know what your your nemesis is. They don't even share any information, so they don't. Right. Yes, that's scary to me. I think. Like, if it's one thing, if he wants to beat me up, I get it. He's gonna beat me up. Yeah. This guy might just wanna. I don't know. Look at me. That's oof. Oof. okay. Uh, Let's move on to less scary things, like the chupacabra, mm, the bloodsucker. Is that what it's considered? Is that like the New Jersey Devil? Have we decided if that's the same thing? I think you know, what chupacabra would focus on what farm animals, Mexico? and it would yeah, like suck the blood out of goats and stuff. It's like a vampire, but an animal. So this is a weird thing. Um, if you type in "real life scary monster" into like YouTube. God. There's, There's a things. wormhole of so many things, and 99.9% of them are total bullcrap. Actually, probably 100%, but the fact that there are so many videos and they have so many hits is weird. It's like it's like people want to see this stuff. They want to believe, I guess, is ideally what it is, right? Yeah, I'm surprised that your list didn't have like tarantulas and spiders and then like even like weird stuff that shouldn't exist, like a like a corpse flower, like things that smell like dead things. Like how does that happen? Yeah, but do you think anyone fears the corpse flower? Anyone? Probably not. Probably <laughs> anyone. not. Right. Like for for fear to happen, I guess should we get into fear itself? And people real fear quick? plants at all? <laughs> the happening. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't fear them though they just killed themselves they were just, yeah they were just scared of them spoiler alert sorry <laughs> 2006 or whatever yeah. 2006 I don't it was a long time ago I didn't really pay attention to that movie it didn't catch my interest and then when it was over I didn't want to watch it again and I never saw it since so I yeah. don't know it's the plants and I, the plants are <laughs> they're making people step in front of their lawnmowers and stuff like, yeah mm-hmm mm. Mm. What was your next Fear thing? is defined as an anxious feeling caused by our anticipation of some imagined event or experience, which is crazy. It's well, imagined. That's literally the definition it. of it. Yeah, but it's still imagined. You don't know if it's going to stop, right? If you're seeing a car accident and you're feeling fear, there's no guarantee that it's going to happen. True. It makes you prepared it's for still the event imagined. so you avoid it. Sure, it's... It's maybe it's even probable. Probability exists. So let's say you're fearing something. I mean, maybe it's a probability of ninety nine point nine percent chance we're gonna get in this car accident. Yeah. But it's also the same feeling you have at when you see that's your window. There's an alien. Oh, it wasn't. But it, there was a one point one point oh one percent chance that there was. <laughs> but hmm. fear is actually it's not a reaction to something. It's a it's a feeling caused by your own anticipation, which I thought was crazy. So fear is 100% internal. So it has you, nothing to do with it. If you couldn't stuff. anticipate anything, you're fearless, right? I would assume. Yes, so, right? If you're you so not be dumb, afraid? you can't. <laughs> but even like um, the memento guy could make memories that are like five minutes long. Like if yeah. you couldn't make one second memory well, or five second future memory, mm-hmm. I guess you're, you're brain dead anyway, kind of. Amnesia, retrograde amnesia. Or is but I'm talking like grade. and yeah. but either way, you, you can make more than five seconds of memories, right? I assume. Did you know they found was it someone who didn't have fear? Oh, I wish I oh, brought her up. Oh, this stat. damn! You know who she is? It was a woman, right? No. Type in woman. How do they can't test? How do they test fear? You have Just no type reaction. In woman who can't, I'll, listen, I'll carry the episode. Do the. <laughs> Woman can't feel fear. Anyway, fear, um, which is a great video game, by the way. Anyone who played, uh, good job if you played. Mm. I sticky bombed a lot of guards, put everything in slow motion, 
and stepped out of like a hiding spot and like they have a reaction where they see you and it, like an alert kind of goes off and they get into like attack mode but i put everything in slow motion so like they'd have the sticky grenade on them they wouldn't know it and i put it in slow-mo step out and they'd be like hey. and they're like training their guns on you and like going into alert mode and like attack all in slow-mo and i'm like <laughs> just blow up and it was to this day it was so awesome her box wife disease oh it's a disease go ahead parts of her brain which cause fear have hardened and wasted away so they Weird. destroyed her amygdala which is involved in emotion yes it sure as hell is you know that from the unpanders folks thanks for joining so she can't process fear that's crazy she would just blindly walk through haunted houses and not and just be like what are you doing Boring. let's go come on yeah <laughs> I'm bored. Let's get out of here. I guarantee we can scare you. Five dollars. He's just making money every day. Five dollars a haunted house. They don't reveal her real name. They just say SM. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder why. Because do you think people would stalk her to try and scare her? <laughs> That's like a <laughs> do it. Henry do it. Henry Malayson who had his uh, hippocampus removed. It's like they didn't want. They can't medically reveal <laughs> anything. Really? Oh, because he died, yeah, and then they could reveal who he was. Interesting. Well, what's real weird is there are people who love being scared. Yeah, they they seek it, thrill seekers. Right. Right. It's um, it triggers your sympathetic nervous system, which is kind of like the one you can't control. Which is interesting because fear is kind of an uncontrolled thing. It's very base. It sets off adrenaline, a bunch of other chemicals through your body, chemicals that you can't otherwise normally get. So you're almost addicted to that chemical release. That sounds good. Fight or, fight or flight. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh, all the adrenaline. Oh, yeah, baby. Fight or flight me? Yes. What's crazy is people, if you get in deep enough, people love that stuff. Like another one is, like sex is one of those primitive, vicious, visceral things. Like you can't get that anywhere else. I'm sure you the same. like an animal, yeah. Yeah. Same thing happens with fear. It's your animal state. You're... <sighs> You're gonna fight or flight. Hmm. You know? I don't know. I'm thinking about something I'll bring up later. I want to talk okay, about. Okay, then I'll go. No, then I will talk hysteria about hysteria later. Uh, let's talk about Carl Albrecht. What? The PhD from uh, wherever he's from? Like Albrecht yeah. Albrecht White? Not sure if he's Maybe. related. I think he is. Okay. Did he talk about the five? Fears that every human has. What are the five fears? We share them all. And they're actually the five, he called them the tree trunks of fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I actually, wow, I think I've learned a lie. He never called them the tree trunks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he meant to. He literally meant to. That's what he's calling them. Like all fears are based off of these five fears. Hmm. So if you break it down, the base fear. Any fear you can think of, they come to one of these five. It starts with extinction of men. Which Ooh. he would have just called it death of, of self, but okay. extinction of man is almost a bigger, broader thing. It's interesting. It's your fear of death, your fear of everything stopping, of humanity not existing, of life not existing. Ooh, can I guess? Next comes. Can I guess? I would assume one what? of them is like fear, fear for yourself. That's the number. That's the top one. That's, that's the. the one. It kind of goes up. in like an arrow. Right? I think or one that's of the, the next ones one. probably that's fear for your ego death. Oh, uh, ego death. Fear for your own huh? your own people. Your your friends and family. That's kind of extinction. That's extinction. Here, I'll tell you because it's you're gonna guess okay. and you're gonna get it right, but not right. Not really. Okay, hit it. Right, and I'll tell you why. Because it's extinction of man. Next step was mutilation okay. of the of the self or the physical body. Next step was um loss of autonomy, which is like your ability to control your own life, whether you because you're paralyzed, you're smothered, you're enveloped, you're engulfed, you're overwhelmed, controlled. Yeah, obligated. there you go. Yep. Yes. Um, number that. two overall was separation. It's a lot to do with um, social fears. Yeah, you could, Isolation, okay. maybe. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Um, and number one was the ego death, which was like the stuff happening to you, your personality, your whatever. Thanks now you can, treat, <laughs> you, can, you can attribute almost any fear into these five. Like your fear of spiders is probably a fear of mutilation. You don't want to get bit or hurt or yeah. wounded or poisoned. 
Um, fear of social fears are usually either fear of separation or fear of the ego, you know? Mm-hmm. Just interesting stuff, I thought. And uh, the tree trunks of fear. Good old Carl. Copyright me, Carl. Arbrecht. Call me. Carl Arbrecht. So, and then I just happened to write down the top 10 fears. Well, I think it was North America or America or somewhere. They just asked people, like 7,000 people. You're going to have to wait. I wrote down the recurring ones. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm going to get through. Please. I want to catch up with my, because I, I got a lot to go through here. Well, <laughs> might go really fast, though. Well, are you talking about social stuff? Oh, I just have a bunch of movies I want to talk about. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Slender Man. That's going to come out this year. I don't know the that's... background. I just know he has like a, a very um, business-like like attire, eight... but spaghetti-like limbs. Yeah, he's like 10 foot tall, and he's always in the shadows and kind of just out of your vision, and he's blurry. Hmm. That sounds fantastic. And and the um, we don't want to comment too much on it because it's an ongoing investigation, slash I didn't do all my research. The one girl... To prove Slender Man existed, stabbed her friend. Huh. You, did you? Hear I thought this? it was a creation by um, something awful. There's a writer there. It was. But someone yes. mimicked it? Or maybe. Yeah. They copied. So anyway, they created Slender Man, which is a, a fictional character that would appear out of the vision, side of your vision. He always carries a briefcase or something. He's like, like you said, dressed like formal business wear. But he's like eight and a half foot tall or ten foot tall sometimes, and he's always in the shadows, and you can't see him all the time. Mm. Sometimes he disappears, and he's just always like lurking. So if there's a picture of you and your family, like somewhere like like a quarter mile down the road, like where you can barely see, there's like someone that's way too tall to be a person back there and way too skinny, but he's like in your picture with your family, and you're like, what? Like that's Slender Man. He's always there. And oh. anyway, uh. He's a popular meme. He's like, you know, everybody talks about him. They, people make their own stories about him. They do stuff like that. And I believe 13-year-olds, a 14-year-old girl, was arguing with her friend that whether he's real or not, and she stabbed her to prove a point. Huh. And it went to court and trial, and there's a lot of That's messy stuff. Terrible. All for a fictitious <laughs> man. <laughs> well, fictitious. He could be real. I mean, somebody Something might have mimicked him, right? But that fed into... Uh, it's creepy, dude. You do the Reddit no sleep ever? I do every once in a while. Yeah, I get in there sometimes. There's some, uh, some, some good crazy ones. stories. Yeah. There's some bad ones. And it's like, I read like oh, I read so long and it's not going to be good. Yeah. Some, it's like, some yeah. Are good. You can usually tell going into it. It's like watching a pornography video, from what I would guess. You know in the first 30 seconds if you're going to like it. You want to stay tuned. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that? That'll, that'll come up uh, in a later episode of the Unbenders. Uh, oh, yes, it will. Oh. <laughs> <Oof. Anyway. laughs> you never watch a porno and it says to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Oh. Mm. But I was going to slip into Minecraft and uh, Enderman as one of the creepier versions of a childish video game. I think that's a pun on Slenderman. I think it is. Which is weird. I didn't catch that until you just said just that. And now. he disappears, and he goes into the shadows. And he reappears. Oh, it's he laughs yeah, at you, and you're like, oh. Yeah, it is. That's Slender Man rip. It totally is. And think of it. Minecraft dude, Mollux, or whatever his name is, he was on Reddit a lot. Come on. And something awful for him. Oh, definitely. Probably... Definitely. Yeah. Right. That's weird. Let's hit your fears. What's your list of... Okay, my top ten. This is just based on a study in like 2008 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I didn't want to do a million studies because fears can change every year. Different countries have different fears. Anyway, this was America at one point in the past 10 years. Top 10. And the first one's a cop-out. It's called social fears is the number one. I think they they, bu- they booked a bunch of them together. Cop-out. Mm-hmm. Number two, agoraphobia. Oh, yeah. You know agora? I've heard of it. Okay. It's, it's like the fear of fears. like you can't go into a public place where there are so many people and so many things going, things are out of your control. You go into the marketplace, you start freaking out. You hear all this white noise. You can't be there. It's too many people. It's too much similar to social phobia, Mm. but it's like a crippling fear. Like there are people who can't go to the supermarket because they're afraid of it. Too many people. It's too many things. I guess, I guess 
one on one, you can Get figure out where things going to move. Keep track of things. Control it if it gets out of control. But if there are hundreds of people, they'll run around and go crazy on you. We're not making fun of agoraphobia, people. Hmm. Moving on. I don't know. Acrophobia. Acrobat. Acrobat. Air. Height. Yeah, height. You got it. That was pretty good. Huh. Height's like number three on this list. Although number four is a cop out. Terramurhanophobia. Pterodactyls fly, so it's flying. Oh, you got it right. Flying. Fear of flying in a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I I no didn't want to wait on that one. That was stupid. Claustrophobia came at number five. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You know what the, the freakiest thing I've ever seen? Uh, you ever heard of Tank Girl, the movie? No, this sounds familiar, but um, it doesn't. It, it was weird. It was one of those like weird film styles. Anyway, um, the one scene is that she's captured and put in this tube. And it's claustrophobic, and they like roll her, like her head is down, and they roll her into water in this tiny tube, and they like semi drown her and then pull her back out. Like there are certain things from certain movies that just get stuck in your mind, and that's that's that. Like I would be the most fearful in a situation where I couldn't roll or move, and I was. Is that drown. your is that your number one fear? Yeah, I think so. Claustro claustrophobic plus like a, a water like combo would be feel. bad. Yeah, being stuck and not be able to move. Like slowly drowning is yeah, like a no-go for you. You don't want to slowly drown. covering your mouth and face and not be able to breathe from a drip of water. That sounds terrible. It is not a fear of mine, but that sounds bad. I'm going to say it. <laughs> yeah. I will say it for the podcast. That yeah. sounds bad, folks. Mm-hmm. Folks, <laughs> um, here at the Unpanderer, slowly drowning, bad. Um, next, number six was Ophid... Ophidiophobia? Oph- Ophidia? Like snakes. That's right. Ophidia? Is snakes? Yeah. Look it up, dude. Maybe this list is. Like the next one even threw me for a loop. Cynophobia? You're afraid of movies? That's what I would have guessed. No, it's C Y N O. I'm guessing it's a Latin dog. What's Latin for dog? Canis. So, cyno? I don't know. Dog. Fear dogs. Hmm. Um. This one caught me a little weird. Astrophobia. Fear of storms. Storm. Close. Storms. And then um, trypanophobia. Fear of needles. Ooh, that's a real that, big one. I mean, I understand that one because it's something that can only do you harm, really, in a, a visceral feel. Right, but it can only do you good as far as vaccines go. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. We don't vaccinate our kids. <laughs> <laughs> we, are... we don't believe it. We are the unpanderers. We do. We don't pander to, dis- to diseases. <laughs> uh, but what's funny is, so you said um, claustrophobia. So remember I said there were the five tree trunks? Uh-huh. That would come in under loss of autonomy. Can't move. Can't You're get stuck. out of your own way. Like hmm. cynophobia, the dog, fear of whatever, uh, the mutilation. I like all these manifestations of like different types of ways you could die. Because really, like under ways to die. Yeah, there's like the creatures. Like you can have all sorts of defigured people come after you, or different like leprechauns or <laughs> um, possessed dolls, like Chucky. Is it weird that they're usually people like? I guess. Well, I I have a, a, a spin on that. So there's other yeah. there, there's other interpretations of things that can attack you, and this is what I found. Well, the first the first four are things that are like from my like. My past a little bit. Not my real past, just my movie past. Not <laughs> my past. Not my past. Movie past. Movie past. The fake past that we all Movies like to you've enjoy. Seen. Yeah, that's true. Have you ever seen The Relic? Is that Damien? Damien? Is it Damien? Damien? It's all for you, Damien! Is that The Relic? Or is that The Omen? That might be The Omen. It might be The Omen. It's the one with the devil kid. No, no. The Relic is when they're inside of a museum oh, no. and there's like some ancient creature that gets realized from a I guess a crate or something and they're all somehow locked oh. in the museum and they all start getting eaten by the relic it's almost like a so dinosaur man I didn't finish it <laughs> I saw that on TV like six years ago and it's it was old but then it was probably a 10 year old movie or something or 15 yeah yeah 1997 anyway like six years ago I was watching it in uh, uh my my old house and I was like this is awesome and I never finished it, and I DVR'd it and everything. You just made me so mad. Now you're going to go watch it. Like well, hold on. on the feed. What happens to the movies you buy from 
Comcast or Verizon or somebody, and you change services, and they're no on your DVR. On yours. You shouldn't buy. That's bullcrap. <laughs> you got to go back That's to Comcast. Bullshit. If you go back, you'll be able to watch fear. it. Wait, so if I go back, I can get it again? I think so. Officially? Or it's like, sorry, sir, that was lost with your old plan. They would probably do that. Comcast is a they terrible would. corporate entity. Unless they're willing to sponsor someone. <laughs> yeah. and anyway, the, anyway, I'm sorry we jumped mm-hmm. around there. But the omen. No, the relic. No, these are all creatures. These are just like creatures that we haven't mentioned yet. Do they show the do they show the creature in the relic at the end? It's nineteen ninety seven, so whatever you see is like a, a CGI garbage. Yeah, blur. Like yeah. Deep Rising. Deep Rising is the uh they're on a, a cruise ship that stops in the middle of the ocean. Because oh, no, it sounds awesome. A giant squid or something like captures the ship and freezes it in place and then they're trying to steal gold or something from the safe. And they're trying to steal a bunch of money. So this little little boat comes up and like the cruise ship's already destroyed. But this is the whole thing of fear is that it's like the the thing that makes the movie great is the environment. It puts you in a place that you're familiar with, but you're you're out of your element. So like the cruise ship is like tilted, it's dark, it's filled with like all these dead bodies and they can't figure out why and there's blood everywhere and then all these tentacles start coming out of everywhere and they can't they can't escape. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the porno ish episode. <laughs> oh jeez, you, no, you meant you got a, a tentacle oh, tentacle fetish? <laughs> no, but I do have a funny story about it. Oh. It involves a famous writer, anyway. Um, save it? Do I have to write it down or you're gonna forget? I'll forget it, but it's it's um he's a famous writer and he he was looking up tentacle porn to prove to his wife that it was real and no one believed him. And it's just Kurt Eisenwald? Kurt Eisenwald. It's like pterodactyl porn. It's like no one's gonna That's a thing. That's is a thing. Or horse play. I don't believe it. Is that is that like women and horses? I mean, that's like I can't describe it. I uh, never I, I never um when we get to the porn episode heard it we'll talk about horse play, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, God bless. God bless this country. Here's a quick um, would you rather break it out for a second. Sure. Uh, God I bless think, everyone. God bless. Would you rather never be afraid again or never be sad again? I'd never be sad again. Pretty easy. I'd like to be afraid, actually. So I'm like, one of these people. Your I, wife dies and you're like, <laughs> Well, it doesn't say you're going to be happy all the time. You'll no, no, you're neutral. right. You just can't be sad. Like, wouldn't you want to be sad? So if you're gonna, if if you can't grieve, and you're always, gonna, <laughs> what would you do? Yeah, well, you're not happy. So what would you be? Angry? You will could you be never, angry. Will you yes. never get over the things that you need to be sad about? Yeah, I guess you wouldn't. Being sad helps you get over it, I guess, or helps you come to grips with it. Maybe? I'm gonna change oh. my answer. I'm gonna be afraid. Never be afraid. Again. Oh, look at this guy. We got the <laughs> eighties right here. I want to be able to grieve. <clears throat> Dan's going to do some 180s here. Oh, wow. Look at the definition of my bicep ever since I started working out. Eight well, days. They look thinner. They almost look like... Uh... <laughs> I will mention Anthony Bourdain passed away. And he, you've got his physique. His <laughs> a physique of a 55-year-old man. <laughs> Who eats brains no, and manure, he balls. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Anthony Bourdain, shout out. Poor guy. He had a good life. I think he would have liked the podcast. I think he would. He um he famously did a rant against um beer snobs one time. Oh yeah. Because like the episode was getting all this hate mail from people because like he would show up at this cool restaurant that like no one only the locals know. And he would get down there with his bare hands and roll up his sleeves and he'd be eating crab or like whatever the delicacy of the the, the area was. And only the locals know it. He's getting down there. He's like, you have to have this soup. It's really good. You got to eat it with your you know, sleeves up. And anytime he does this, he's like, I want a beer with my thing. Sometimes he'd be drinking Coors Light, Miller Light, like whatever. Just like, he, yeah, whatever you can take. Hey, he says, I love a cold beer. And people were like, I can't believe he's drinking water piss. And like people were writing in and like writing hate mail. And he got wind of it. And he was just like, I don't give an F what kind of beer I want. I just want a nice beer. He's like, I enjoy micro brews and all different fancy beers, but if I'm here and they have Coors Light, I'll drink a goddamn Coors Light. Like he's like, what is the point of you people? I just want to enjoy my food and I like a nice cold beer with it. So that's like, but like that's being hospitable, right? Because most of the time he's visiting yes. people and they give him something. He's, he's in not going to be like, world. 
Oh. No. And why would he turn his nose up? It's part of the experience. Like Exactly. He's he's the opposite of a snob. Mm-hmm. Which made him awesome. And he was very real, the guy. Yeah. You see him, he's very he's able to put himself in the shoes of whoever he's visiting. Exactly. And it's usually not rich, wealthy kind of sores who whatever. He's like the average Joe a little bit. What? And he was never pretentious, never said no, never, oh, I can't drink this Coors Light. <laughs> it's not a rate my beer beer. <laughs> like, who does that? No. And that's, that's what made him awesome. And I don't know what he dealt with, what his life was like off camera and all that, but it's sad. That's all. We do have to say that having a persona on TV in film is completely different from having a, a real life. It is. Yeah. You, well, like you never know. Us on the unpanderers, dude. I could be super depressed. Hate my life. <laughs> hate you. I can hate you. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone. Ah, We're okay, making so much so money. Funny. We have to put up with each other. <laughs> oh. Somebody who never does anything for the podcast. <laughs> you gonna cry about it? Oh. <laughs> no, no. I was laughing. I'm a terrible laugh. A cry laugh. A cry You're laugh. A jerk, man. Truly, except I'm doing most of the lifting in this episode. Yeah, you are, definitely, because you're talking too oh. much. <laughs> <laughs> Lost my drink there. Would you like to bring up all your movies and TV uh, shows? I'm just going to roll through them. Yeah. Let's roll through them, You ever them, see please. The Thing? I didn't. It's, uh, so they're in like a winter, no, I'm going to say like Antarctic area, where the thing is uh, unearthed, it's uniced, and okay. it, it takes the form of other people. So they have to like judge other people based on like whether they think it's the alien or not. It's funny. I know enough about that story and tales of that movie that I almost – that makes sense. Like you filled in a lot of blanks. I yeah. feel like I have. And you that's, filled in a lot of blanks. 1950s or something? It, well, that's another thing is that all, a lot of these movies were redone. So like yeah, Horror movies get redone a lot, which is yeah. interesting. It's like, like, I guess it's all visual. Most of it's visual. Mm. And since CG and everything's – Or not visual. Do you know what I mean? Name a movie. Doom. <laughs> Just doom a movie. Only one. It wasn't good. I know. I did it on purpose. Um, I did Mike Myers. They did uh, Omen a bunch of times, right? You mm-hmm. saw the second time. How about The Shining? They never redid The Shining, right? I guess that's true. When you get a certain set of actors or an actor that embodies it, like you're not uh-huh. going to do another Jack Nicholson that well, that I thought some of the well, that's I was gonna say Spider Man and stuff like that. That's because they're action though, horror, or like shaky cam ones, like uh, Blair Witch or Cloverfield. You know, I thought Blair Witch was one of the greater movies I saw for one reason. I saw it in one of the first three days. It was in major theaters before it was like huge. Right, right. right. Well, it was it was like the day it became huge. We went on a whim to go see a movie, and that's what we saw because like oh. everyone was talking about. it. And the rumor was it was actually just footage they found. Oh, I mean, it's a little that's good. naive to really believe it, but like that's what there was hype behind it. Like, do you remember it was like in only in a few theaters, and then it hit big, and then like maybe a whole week went by, and everyone was like, "It's stupid. It's just a shaky camera, and it's it's fake." Does everyone know it's fake? And everyone's like, "Yeah, it's fake." But like for like a few days, there was a suspended medium where people were like, "What is this? That's effed up." Who's the director? Is that a sh- I second. actually don't know. Is it a famous director? I thought it was like some no namer. You can look it up. Well, I this remember is, the I end of the movie this... where they were looking um, at the wall or whatever. Yeah, there's one person looking at the wall and they're trying to like, they're like, uh, Jessica? Well, Jessica? And then it's like, and it shuts off. Drops right? the camera. No, it shut, drops the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah What's crazy they is they. It's hinted. Yeah, I thought that's what it was the case. It's hinted that. um. The witch of the woods would make the children stare and stare at the wall while she did something to them or something. Hmm. So that was the idea, I guess. A lot of people didn't get that because it's like one sentence in the thing. So it plays on the, like the you get a you get a timeout. You have to stare at the wall. A little bit, yeah. It's like what child. she did to the children. Right, 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 right. That's kind of so. Like... What we're talking about has made me realize that a lot of these horror themes, oh, yeah, get repeated quite obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Are you going to go with child? I am. Is your 
Creeps from Child. Go ahead. I wasn't. I was going to go for the movie, you the movie It, which focuses on like a different... So it has, what, five or six main characters that have different types of traumas. You have, like the girl who's being like abused by her father, and then you have the person who was like persecutes themselves because of what happened to their family. Like the Mikey. And then you have the no, other okay. one that's like um, the outcast. So it's all different types of, I guess the five pillars is what you're talking about. The five tree trunks. A little bit. Yeah. The tree trunks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tree trunks. Copyright us. Uh-huh. But that movie was great because it all, like the whole point of it, the clown, was to focus on oh, the things it, that dude. scares people. I blanked out. And I forgot. That's all right. What it was. I was like, is that the hand movie? Is that the blob? I was like, no, nah, that's the blob. Okay, so my bad, my bad. Oh, it tries to, yeah, it tries to make them fearful so it can eat their fears and feed on their, I guess, their body yeah. once that takes the them chemicals over. they released. Sure, maybe it, the clown, can't actually create those chemicals himself, yeah. so he has to create fear in others to receive their chemicals. Mm. Yeah, that's I like nasty. that feeling. You know what? It is just a story of you when you elected never to be afraid again. See what happens. You couldn't feel fear, you so you were trying the to get it from someone else. As no, a kid, you were. Tr- what you saw the original it as a kid? No, I had this toy clown that scared the hell out of me. Uh-uh. No, well, I don't know why don't you know give clowns, clowns to kids. Know. Clowns are always scary. I don't know why they're ever fun. They're never fun or funny. I think like that was a 1600s thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like the jester. Like, yeah, they were a continuation of the jester. I was just gonna say that. It's like they they missed the wave of funny and then they just like became demented. I know someone who went to clown college. Good lord! Um, tell me more like about he was that. Older. You I said worked this before. With him, I did. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He was the only guy who worked at um one of my first jobs, scooping ice cream and all that. It was all for like sixteen year olds, and he was eighteen. He was like the older guy, and like he was going to college. And he made six and a quarter an hour. Everyone else wow. made like five fifteen. So it was like he was like the big shot on campus. Oh, yeah. And I remember ever like didn't look up to him, but like you had to respect that yeah. he was old. That extra he dollar had... an hour will buy you an ice cream. Well... <laughs> and uh, I just remember after I knew him for like nine months, someone was like, "Yeah, you know what he goes to college for?" And I was like, "No, what?" And they're like, "He wants to become a freaking clown." And I was like, "Huh." <laughs> What do you mean, like a lawyer? I'm like, you know, what I, mean? I thought it was like a funny joke that I was missing as the youth. And they were like, no, he goes to clown college. And I was like, what's that? And they're like, you have to go to school to become a clown. He's becoming a clown. And I was like, makeup? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like doing the sound effects. <laughs> the best part about that is like, if you hire a clown or you ever like, can I see your degree? I want to make sure that you're a certified clown. You a real clown? Where did you go to college? <laughs> I need to know some information before I hire. Yeah. Did you see? Um, Can I see your transcript? Always, always sunny. Um, spinoff called the Jep, the lawyer, the the Mig, the Mick, the Mick, the Mick. No, I did not see that. It's um, uh, the girl Ashley Bree, Allison Bree, Eight Olson. Kate Olsen is the girl in Thank you. Sunny. Yes, Always Sunny. Thank you. It's her. It's her show. I don't know how I made the connections I made, but trust me, they make sense to me. <laughs> anyway, it's her show, and she pretty much just plays Sweet D from Always Sunny, but her own show. And it's mm-hmm. so funny because um, there's a five-year-old she hates her. He could be eight. I'm bad with kids' ages. And like a 13-year-old girl. And she hires a clown for their party because her parents are essentially in jail for like the next eight years. Uh-huh. So she's their live-in mom, and they're rich. And she's white trash so she's like running it like that okay and she hires a clown and i think it's i think it's someone famous i think it's um like paul giamatti oh i hate that guy he's creepy oh he's he's a good actor he's so dude creepy. he's such a good actor anyway it might not even be him i might be talking out my butthole but he um they hear a rumor that like he's a druggy clown and he's asleep in the bathtub and they find a balloon and they're like this is heroin <laughs> he just got high and they're like oh my god and i remember the kid he's like he wakes up and his nose is bleeding and he's like trying to yell at the kids and he doesn't make any sense. And someone tackles him and like beats him up. And he's like, I need my insulin. And someone's like, what? And like he wasn't on heroin. He just needed. His head. <laughs> I just remember cracking up. Clowns are scary. I agree with you. 
that one clown would... when I was a kid. He would always just like stare at you when you're sleeping because its eyes could look at anything. I ended up as like a wood block inside <clears> and it throw another thing out the window. So, what makes something scary? I don't even know. Is it is it what I did my oral oratory? Did I do that right? I don't think you did. <laughs> original oratory. Thank you. Is it what I did my original you're oratory? Fearful of being on a podium and talking to people. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I, my whole speech was on you're you're not afraid of a thing. You're afraid of not knowing. Hmm. So you kind of don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know what this clown can do to you. You don't know why it's looking at you. You don't know why aliens are outside your window. You don't know what can happen to you if you're stuck in a pipe like and you can't move. Like, you know, it's it's almost like something happens to you. That's not fear. You know what's going to happen. That's not fear. It's almost like not knowing what's going to happen is scarier than all of it put together. I think that's the what the movies do. Are wild. Like the movies and bring that's an environment that's good, a spin scary on. Scary movies yeah. make you like not know. Yeah, you're not sure what the environment will bring. Especially something you usually know, like a clown or a fun house. Yeah. And they turn it twisted, and you're like, that's not what a fun house is. And you're like, I don't know what this means. You're like, what? I like don't know. War of the Worlds. Like they had um, mm-hmm. aliens somehow transport into like giant machines that are underneath the earth and they bust out. That was weird. That's strange. And then the, um, they start the terraforming. Cruise. Yeah. Tom Cruise one, they start terraforming the earth to try to take it Dude, over. First 40 minutes of that movie is like such a good movie. Yeah. It's so freaky. And then it the went downhill from like, there. Kind of it's like stupid. Cause they don't do anything. The, the action is passive is that we've built up our own immunities to the bacteria on earth. And that's right, what killed people. They're from aliens, right? Boom. Yeah, stupid aliens. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> yeah. Should have got should have got the bird flu, dummy. <laughs> I could just see a whole bunch of like sweet D's throwing like turds at like aliens. And it's like the aliens are just Yeah, they start melting. I'm melting. What, um, what's interesting is that uh like things that make that movie great early on, like uh it's the, about the storm habit. is happening, right? Yeah. You and hold on. Everyone's about, reaction. This sticks with me. Everyone's reaction. They're all staring at it, and like people are coming out of their houses and they're looking like at pausing. it. Pausing. It's like Independence Day this. when they're holding the sign up to the aliens. Like, let's have a party, Wait, aliens. And do you remember the wind is coming, is blowing towards the storm? You remember that line? No, I don't. Okay, so the wind is whipping like crazy. The storm's going nuts, and they're like, "What's wrong, Dad?" And he's like, uh, "The wind is going into the storm." Hmm. And like I looked, and all the stuff was blowing towards the storm, and I was like, "That's not how it's supposed to work." I was like, "That is weird." I was like, "If that happened in real life, that would freak me out. I'd have to go see what was going on." And little things like that, like lightning striking the same spot like forty times in a row. Yeah. If it did that, I'd be like, "Something f is going on." That's terrible here. Like, but would you watch? Like, would you sucks. would you rely on someone else to film it and watch it later, or would you be like, "We got to get this on film." If I'm close enough, I'm already gone. If I, if I see it on TV and I'm like, it's only you're 10 the sucker minutes, that yeah, stands right over the hole, and you're just like, let's look what. Oh, it's no, 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 I go, I go. I'm in the back of the crowd, but I still need to be part of the crowd. Like, I gotta see what's going on. You're making sure you're faster than other people. Well, I'm just making sure if something bad happens, hopefully they're dead first. I don't know. That's how I am. I'm like brave but afraid. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, but that's like the Independence Day where, uh, so the Will Smith's wife in that movie has a friend who goes up on top of the skyscraper. Yeah, she's holding. Bring back Elvis! Someone has a sign that says "Bring back Elvis." Yeah, and then like take me, abduct me. Some of the signs, like it's funny. It's like, oh, I get you. And then they get blown to smithereens because they have no idea what's going to happen. You don't. Hmm. Ooh, let's talk about Quiet Place, which you haven't seen. You saw it, right? I did. Uh, is, I don't know why I'm burping so much this episode. Probably disrespecting the, the listener. Your, yeah, yeah, that always happens. <laughs> um, uh, is John Krasinski, uh, he directed it too? And Emily Blunt. Um, yeah, he did. Or is he just in it? Okay, cool. He directed cool. it. Because I've heard really good things, and he's in it, right? He's the main whatever, or no? Yeah, he's the main character. Okay, cool. Co- Bad co-starring. Good? He's good, he's good. Co-starring with oh. Emily Blunt, his wife. Oh, and she did she help make it? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. I think she got jealous. Actually, she's paid more than John. 
So maybe she's the star. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, that's I heard really good things. Yeah, I don't know if I want to ruin it for people, but it's really good. It's a uh, ruin it. Just kind of like hint at maybe some things. I'll hint at like the so everyone when we started... wants to see the movie, not be subscribed. Just throw some money in our Patreon. Follow. Hit that like yeah. button. Hit subscribe. We'll whatever they say. Yeah. Go ahead. So the interesting part is that my wife is hard of hearing, and we're at uh, a, a restaurant slash movie theater. So one of those uh-huh. places that delivers food to you while you watch. Oh, oh I know them well. Yes, yes. So the shit. Um, so we both ordered salads, and right before the movie starts, uh, part of the movie, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> part of the movie is, it is quiet? that it's silent. Oh, it's almost dead silent during like 90% of the movie. Because that's the whole gimmick, is that they can hear you. They can hear you, whatever you're doing. So it's So some woman in the front row very loud and boisterous says someone is chewing god like way too damn loud and i, I don't know if it's us but like oh, there's no we, we on, had just started our salads oh shit so did you we try to chew it's like eating popcorn like quietly you just like compress it like <laughs> it's like there's no way you could do that quietly but the hilarious thing is if she were to freak out and to go after my wife, it's like, my wife doesn't know that she's making that much noise. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like, I know. Like, it's like this no whole movie's it. about that. <laughs> <laughs> she's the quiet place. You're ruining it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. Yeah. What's real funny is like, uh, so having kids is awful or everything. Oh, yeah. They're awful. Uh-huh. Children are the worst. Yeah, anyway. You have no time. Yep. You're done. You're cooked. You should might as well just so, give up now. So my kid, uh, I take him to the doctors. He doesn't usually go to the doctors. And it's not for him. It's for his aunt. I had to go get a check of a doctor or whatever. And it was like, you have to do the second floor medical building, everything. He goes in and he's sitting and he can see all these people in the chairs, the waiting room. Mm-hmm. And everyone's quiet. And I'm whispering. Now, I didn't tell him it's a quiet place, but he, he gets all the cues, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, buddy, uh, why don't we uh, check your iPad? And I couldn't log on to the stupid hospital Wi-Fi. I'm not even going to get involved here because logging on, you got to like put in your the day you're born, your favorite social security number, all this other stuff, and then like why you're using the internet, and like YouTube doesn't work, but other things might work. And uh, anyway, yeah. like it doesn't work, buddy. Here, do you want something to eat? Here, have some chips. He grabbed the chip and he was going to eat it. And I know he eats so messy and just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, buddy, 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 buddy. Eat real quiet and uh, don't make a mess, okay? He said, okay, dada. And he whispered. And he had another big whisper. So I was like, oh, he's yeah. got it. He goes like this. <laughs> and like, I was like, did you even bite it? I was like, this <laughs> And I was like, he was like this, looking at me like, and I was like, and I'm looking at him like, is this good for real? And he goes to take a second bite. And at this rate, he'd have to take 8,000 bites to finish one chip. And I said to him, buddy, you can take a bigger bite. Huh? And you can chew a little louder. <laughs> and all these people are like trying not to laugh. And I was just, he was just like. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And then he's like. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go over here let's and eat chips, here. okay? Let's just go. Oh. <laughs> it's a little joy to my heart. Good oh, job, kid. That's amazing how they do that. It's just ridiculous. But like, it's over the top. They take everything to the extreme because yeah. they don't, you know, they don't know otherwise. It's pretty cute. <sighs> we'll so say. we ended, we ended fear with a little bit of yoy, <laughs> as we say. We did yogging. We didn't end it anywhere. <laughs> <sighs> I will somewhere. say that. Uh, John Kroninski is going to play Jack Ryan in an upcoming uh, series coming out this this year. It's going to be good. Not Jack Reacher. Jack Ryan That's from Jack uh, Ryan. I think like uh, John Clancy is that what it is? John? Yeah, Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. Oh John. wait, like um, Rainbow Six type stuff? I think so. Yeah. Really? It's going to be interesting. It's weird though. Who can play action? Who can't? Who can play horror? Who can't? Who plays comedy horror? Like. I think you would have never thought great. that Jim from The Office was going to play a, like a horror or like whatever. Yeah. yeah and, uh, it's pretty cool. He's got range. So get a, I'm going to fly through these because I can feel that you've got to take a piss. I, I didn't until you just said that we're pissed. Now I do. Now <laughs> yeah. I'm all I can think of. Right. <clears throat> um, Let's bring it in. So Alien. Just a, I mean, that's classic. It's too classic. We don't have to talk about it, but 
Alien or Aliens? Because well, I get them confused. The what? The, the second one? The second one where you're driving through like a a tunnel in like that tank, and you feel safe mm. inside the tank, and then all of a sudden it like everything changes, so you can't. I think it's Aliens. I think that Alien. That's yeah. The second one is Aliens. I think so. Yes, correct. Ooh. And then we mentioned yeah. little paranormal activity. Do you have you seen that one? No. Um, I possession. She's in her so house. I'm not a fearful person. Demons. I know. And it's the right. And it's oh, is yeah. it demons they yeah. go with? I feel like they run around. I uh, know, nah, man. Uh, can't see. There's it. a thing with me. I don't. I don't like scary movies. Really? I swear to God. What the hell? And they don't. They don't. Scare me while I'm watching them, but like after I watch them, like six you hours start later, about them. yeah, and I'm like the last one awake in my house, <laughs> yes. and I'm trying to do this, and I'm like, I do the overlook, and I'm like, and this is what I always say, I'm like, think of this. Sometimes lawyers pee their pants, and I'm like, what does that mean? And I'm like, ah, oh, I guess everyone's human. Bad things happen. Why even worry about the small stuff that happens? It doesn't even happen. Like, that's my thought process when I think of lawyers pee their pants. Mm -hmm. But it... We're good. Yeah, okay. But I, I keep... The door is open. I do the double up behind you. I had it closed. It didn't close the other one. It's still open. Oh, that one? I'm actually not afraid someone, of closet. Someone could be watching. I hope they are. Monsters There's a the bed. Window. In the closet. So hold on. What's the scariest thing to you little monsters. That, when you're falling asleep? Little monsters? Like little monsters? I feel things? like they've got no, no I feel like have you ever seen the movie Little Monsters? Is it little uh, monsters they have a portal underneath your bed that goes to the underworld? Yeah, I think that's little monsters. That's that's kinda wasn't that the like almost adult the, like, themed crystal, kid movie? I think. Is uh I want to say like Biff, but that's the wrong word for <laughs> dog thing underneath. <laughs> Yeah, but like that's almost adult themed. Like there's some adult themes going on. For yeah, a kid it's like movie. a kid movie that's like really <laughs> freaky. Hey, a lot of those movies did that. Maybe that's what made them so scary. I don't know. They're really Maybe we're softening up as a people. As a people. Yeah, because they were scarier back in the 90s and 80s. But maybe you're not allowed to because like you could really scar someone. Yeah, like The Exorcist. You don't get the excess, excess, accessories. <laughs> <laughs> accessorist. <laughs> um, to this day, I think that's rated as like one of the scariest movies of all time. Well, right? it's like the kid is spinning their head is spinning and they're vomiting. Like that's spit a ton. Your mother f Satan in the whatever she's doing stuff with the cross. It's like very visceral, very mm. hardcore. Harsh. You know what's funny? I got in trouble for seeing one R-rated movie. No, two was one Judge Dredd. Oh my god! I saw Judge Dredd, the action movie Judge Dredd, the original, mm -hmm. Stallone, right? And my mom found out. I don't remember where I saw it. I was like twelve or something, maybe my friend Hank's house. You're sheltered. And exactly. Well, that's what I was. But but I also saw other R-rated movies. But for some reason, she heard I saw Judge Dredd. She got so mad and like punished me. Everything. I only got in trouble for watching an R-rated movie one other time, and I was like eighteen at the time. It was like 16 or something. And it was The Exorcist, huh. which is an old movie. And she was like, you can't see that. And I was like, it wasn't even that scary. It was at a sleepover with like nine, ten other people. Like we were laughing at it or whatever. And then we were like, oh, that's weird. But like that tells me that she was terrified of that movie. <laughs> She's projecting her fear on the movie, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what happens, right? Your parents. You can't watch that. You can't watch that. So like, like mom, a... this is 30 years later. Like, you know, we moved on. But my theory is that that literally scared the hell out of her. Right? Yeah. I As you approach, like, 30s and mid-30s, you find out that your parents projected all these fears onto you that are really illogical. And you start to figure out that, like, because of well, the way Well, hold your on. They're not are... always illogical. They may have been illogical years ago, but technology, times have changed. People have changed. Mm -hmm. The world has changed. So your, your fear of the world and... What happened then mm -hmm. might not hold water now. Exactly. Like, don't give out your phone number. You'll get raped by uh, people with rabies. It's like, Mom, <laughs> nowadays everyone has everyone's phone number and no one has rabies. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's, I don't Those know, the world are already changes. dead. Don't worry about them. <laughs> everyone with rabies is dead, Mom. They died in your generation. That's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> Isn't it 100% uh, death rate for rabies if you don't get it cured in a week or something? I think it is. It's one of those diseases that That's we joke not good. about, but it's not. Well, you just get rid of it. You know what I mean? I got rabies. Give me the shot. Yeah. Or... They'll be like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm just going to anti-vax this and uh, I'm going to be, no, you're dead. Yeah, right. Hmm. Mm. I've got. I'll, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna run right through this. This Event Horizon. You ever see that one? Oh, it was actually a really good one. Yeah, I did. I enjoy the spacey ones. Yeah, it was like an alien demon kind of thing that like so it takes over people and then they're part of the ship and then like the guy rips out his eyes. Yeah, says, well, that's a ship pressure. Me. Oh yeah. He's like, I can see through the ship. But that spun off into like Dead Space for a video game. Oh, is that, that where Dead Space kind of got? Yeah, kinda, makes sense. a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little it, bit. It's part of like the Resident Evil kind of flair is that you have like a gun that will help you with certain types. So I remember the Dead Space had like the multi-armed things that would charge at you, and then mm -hmm. you'd use like the saw blade gun, and it would like chop down its legs. It's just like <laughs> line gun. That thing was awesome. That's the best. Zombies, part. Were, zombies were huge. Oh, let's skip. Uh, I knew zombies. it was coming up. Sorry, I didn't know I was skipping ahead. Uh... I don't have your list. Yeah, that's a Resident Evil theme, though. They're all zombies. A lot of games. Slow, slow turning. Ah. Uh, if you're trying to turn to get the zombie that's behind you. <clears throat> that's part of my shirt, though. My shirt. So survive when you're driving. Oh, ah, running them over. If you Look see your series of shirts, Jesus, yeah. you sound like me in the early Unpanders. Yeah, episodes. you're on. You're on point. I guess you ran out of shirts. <laughs> yes I did yeah, but he's driving a car he's got a handgun and he's running over zombies oh, I'm that's like, pretty I don't sweet know. yeah I think it's probably a video game but maybe maybe not but maybe a game that I texted you earlier today what was the game Dead Rising oh, except yes. I called uh, it Rising I, yes. Dead yeah you were wrong I said Rising Dead I had all the right words well that Dead Rising comes directly so this is the mo one of the coolest things okay. is that you have what uh, Dawn of the Dead, which was awesome. Robert, I Romero? actually watched Romero? that today. I don't know. No, it's or De Niro. Is it Zack Snyder? No, Romero. By? Romero. That was the original. I think. Oh, 1979 film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, not the one you saw. What did no, you say? I watched the 2004 one. Who's that from? It was directed by Zack Snyder. So he did like the Sin City Death. Death proof type movies? No, no. Well, maybe he did, but later. it's not in that style. Oh, okay. Oh, it's not? I, I, I didn't see it. It's one of those things that you, like, it does, not horror, but like... Gore horror? Commentary. Like, yeah, it's like the re realistic kind of, like... Gritty. Say gritty. Say gritty. Come on. You no, I'm not going to say gritty. Like, she, she's like, the, it starts to focus on the woman who's a nurse, and it jokes that, I think there's other scenes that it plays off of. It's homages to... Like there's a, an movies, ambulance, like, the, yeah. like Dawn of the Dead. There's an ambulance with someone sleeping in it, and then she thinks she's a zombie. Well, you think they're a zombie, but she's like, "Hey!" And then they like get up. I'll help you. They're chained down or something. Yeah, she says hi to a little girl as she's driving home, and then <coughs> when they wake up, the little girl's like in their house. <coughs> Ooh. And then the guy's like, "Oh, let me go. What happened to you? Something's." And then he gets destroyed. Yeah. And then the and whole then, thing is, yeah, it's like a third person rear view camera on the person driving away from their home like crying and figuring out like that the world is completely different and her just like shutting down okay. but trying to survive at the same time and then they go to a mall and the mall is a direct rip off of Dawn of the Dead in Dead Rising so wait, which one came first? Dawn of the Dead and Dead Rising came in like 2006, oh, two years later. Okay, I didn't know that, but that makes sense. Yeah, and down in the basement, they start using like, all the stuff in the yeah, yeah. auger. Is there an auger? Yeah, I don't think there's auger's an auger. the best weapon in that game. But oh, they okay. do have random things that they grab when they like zombies show up right, and they have to kill somebody with like a. With it. Uh, I don't even know what that stupid game is, where you have like the little uh, the little uh, gates and you have to knock the balls through, and then. The hell is this? Wait, damn. with the croquet? Croquet. croquet. Um, yeah, croquet. croquet. He kills yeah. him with a croquet. Croquet, folks. Croquet. Yeah. Croquet. Croquet. Mallet. Croquet mallet. Mm hmm. Shout out, croquet. So there's like an incestuous kind of movie game thing going on here. 
You get Event Event Horizon and you get Dead Space. Hmm. Hey, pouring a beer. It's okay. Right. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. With all the zombie stuff. I love the zombie ones. Do you are you allowed to watch the zombie ones when you're younger? Probably not. Not really. Actually, zombies weren't that big back then when we were younger. No, I think they hit a they hit a peak around our teenage, late teenage college. Years. Yeah. And after the zombies, the vampires were big. Like World War Z or like Z Nation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. The vampires. The Dracula, Bram Strokers. Well, that was early, early, but then, like, the, we did a whole episode on blood and vampires. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Young Panders episode, who the hell knows? Look it up yourself. We're not here to do all your work. The Where'd sexiness of uh, vampires, an interview with a vampire. Oh, yeah. Tom yes. Cruise and Brad Pitt. Is it both of them? Yeah, both of them are in that movie. It's awesome. I know Brad was. It's awesome. It's intense. Sexy as vampire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Walking Dead. Is that it? Zombie? No, I'm almost there. What's Walking Dead? Walking Dead is a series on TV that got terrible. After AMC four after season three or four. Yeah. I will give them that, like, that's not a zombie movie, per se, or a zombie series, per se, because it Dude starts to Do with the nail bat or whatever. Well, they always, it's like 28 days later where they wake up. Yeah, nail bat. Ah, it's funny, Dale. Well, they wake up in, like, hospital. Like, the same thing with The Walking Dead is, like, the cop wakes up in a hospital. And then he tries to figure out what's going on when everyone else is gone. And he runs into somebody that saves him, that tells him what's going on, gives him the down low. Do you know what's a really good movie? You just reminded me of by accident. Um, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. That's a a great movie. Dawn of the Dead. And uh, I think 28 Days Later. Which one came first? Because I feel like Shaun made fun of all of the zombie movies at once. 28 Days Later is 2002. Shaun of the Dead is 2004. 2004? Yes, that's exactly. He was playing on that one. I thought so. Simon Pegg. Yep. Who directed that? Uh, Shaun of the Dead? Uh, yeah. I'm Edgar just Wright. What else did he do? Anything else I would know? Uh, click that bad boy's name. Hey, click the guy's name. Click it. Click it or tick it. Oh, yeah. Anything? Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Really? Hot That's Fuzz. weird. I did Hot Fuzz. Well, of course. I, I guess his Simon Pegg series of movies. He did Ant Man. Yeah. Did he? Oh, interesting. Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Really? He's pretty how do, big. How do you get from? That's insane. Hey, I did Ant Man. Can you do Star Wars, the biggest Disney purchase yeah. ever, and the biggest thing ever? Yeah, I got time. I'll fit that in. What else did you do, Scott Pilgrim? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does this have a cult following though? And it's actually pretty good. Good point. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, I, I enjoy them thoroughly. It's weird how they mix... Uh... Anyway. Yeah. Walking Dead. Go back to that. Mm-hmm. So that's not... Like, the zombie movies are all about you versus, like, a crowd of people and being outnumbered. And The Walking Dead is sort of that until... I mean, it's only when it's convenient that you get outnumbered by zombies. But it's mostly, like, other groups of people and their ideologies other little mini cults that try to attack you and take you over and steal your stuff. Right, so it was less yeah. interesting then. Well, actually more interesting more when you think about it, but in it ways. wasn't as well done, maybe. It gets repetitive. There was a scene where they're... And this is old enough where I can talk about it. It's not a spoiler, unless it's a spoiler to you, and then you could tune out. Turn off now, but donate, hit that like button, hit subscribe, folks. Do whatever... I don't know what the people say. No, they get captured by cannibals. One of the things we didn't talk about were cannibals. Which I think is a Halloween theme. I don't think cannibals is a thing. I've never seen anyone talk about cannibals except in jokes. I never seen cannibal only happens in like two movies where people are stuck in a ski house and people are stuck on an island. Mm-hmm. I think cannibals are out. Like nobody does cannibal Unless movies. You're like or cannibal a native tribe that's hungry. But I think that's like from the nineteen an idea about natives from the nineteen eighties. I don't think nowadays people talk about cannibals. That's what I'm getting at. Do you think people talk about cannibals now? Is that what you're saying to me? No, because I think are there cannibals food for most people? I don't. That cannibalism isn't about food. It's not like think about it because you have enough plants and things around you. It's more of a religious thing almost, isn't it? Or a punishment thing? I don't think so. I think it is. I think cannibalism only happens on. Starving on an island, I could see that, and starving in a, a lodge, 
covered by ice and snow, or right? I walking that. Dead. Everyone is running out of food. Are they? And then, oh, see, that's I didn't I didn't catch that. I didn't watch Walking Dead. That was the one series that at the beginning or the end, I forget. But they uh, they have them all in a row in a trough, and they're trying to kill them uh, humanely by slitting their throat. So they slit like one guy's throat, second guy's throat, and they're like working their way down. And this was probably like the end of the end of the good times for Walking Dead, that they get down to like the next guy he's about to get, and then explosions, and then craziness happens, and then everything turns. It's good stuff. Crazy. Hmm. Which leads me into the crazies, mm-hmm. which uh, one of my favorite guys, Timothy Oliphant. This is a regular dude. You don't know the actor? No. He was in um, Santa Clar- Clarita Diet. You know who that guy is? I know what what that is, but Timothy Clara what? Deadwood. Oh, see Deadwood. No, no, no. Give me no. Give me the name again. I'll Google him. Timothy Oliphant. Like. Give me the first three letters. Ola. A O O L Y. O L Y. Okay. Yeah. O L. Oliphant. Like almost. Oliphant. Like... Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Word. I like this guy. He's a. He plays. He looks like Dracula sometimes. If you ever seen him on Conan, he just like doesn't give a shit. And it's like he has probably like six or seven interviews, and he just like. Uh, the third one is his Conan, the one D bag on Justified. Oh, oh he's yeah, the Justified, Justified dude. Too. That's what he's from. Okay, okay, yeah. now I remember. He shows yeah. up in like uh, board shorts and flip flops, and he's got like a big bruise on his foot. And Conan just like makes fun of him for like taking too much, taking taking the edge off. <laughs> taking the edge off. But he's totally you could you could hang out with that guy. He just seems like he'd like shoot yeah, the but... shit with you. But he's in the crazies. The crazies is like. The people will get kind of zombified and they go nuts and they start doing violent things and they have to get out of the town. He's the sheriff. And by the time they leave the town, they nuke it and then it spreads to the next town that they're heading towards and then it cuts out. Hmm. So the final, the final movie, because I did all movies because I went crazy on this one and you don't like scary horror movies and you were sheltered as a child. I'm sorry that your parents kept you from seeing these don't be i hardly ever pee my pants hardly ever on purpose um it wasn't cabin fever it was cabin in the woods the cabin in the woods you ever heard of that one what is that? no it's a joke on all of these so it a group of teenagers go to the cabin in the woods and mm-hmm. they're in this like uh almost like a scenario that will cause them to die which is they'll become Our sacrificial movies, yeah They'll become mm-hmm. sacrifices to a god to appease him from causing the apocalypse. So there's like a team of uh, scientists that are watching them inside the cabin, and they're going through all the tropes. So they're like, "We should probably spread, like split up." And then like somebody's like, "Actually, is wise is like, no, I don't think that's a good idea." And they're like, "Yeah, we should stay together." And then it's like they actually stay together until they get like chopped down. But the best part about that movie is that they figure it out. And they start to come back together after they've been like semi killed. And then they're like, they prevent the apocalypse, but it's, it happens anyway. And they have like all sorts of like all the crazy, like the Sasquatch, the werewolf. They have like a unicorn that loves to stab people with his horn. Like, there's like, like all the animals are escaping. And then like all the scientists are getting attacked by the mutants and stuff. And it's just, it's a good spin. It's, it's pretty it's well all done. Them. Yeah. Hmm. It's, What's it called? Uh, Cabin in the Woods. Hmm. What year? Oh, I think that was like uh, ooh, I don't even have that up. I think it was like two thousand. As like old twelve. Oh, not too old. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You make me look it up now. Huh. I was just curious because I'm thinking, is this now or like twenty years ago or five years ago? It's more recent than most. Two thousand. Well, I hit it. Two thousand twelve. Pretty good. Pretty good. I actually enjoyed the. Uh, is it scary movie? Is that the name of the? Uh, Comedy spoof of all the scary movies. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I remember from scary movies is when they're like getting intimate, and then I think it's um, Jason or someone is breathing heavy, le- le- leering over them doing it. No, oh. no, no. It's uh, what's her name from the House Bunny? Oh, I forget her name. The blonde. Jenna. Jenna? She's married to not Jenna, but anyway, she she gets plastered up to the ceiling from the guy being so backlogged. Erotically, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. But she gets stuck there. Anyway, those movies bring me a little joy. Yeah, they're comedic. 
which apparently yeah. is the only movie you were able to see when you were younger. Is the comedic ones. Action too, apparently. I don't know. Listen, I saw Ghostbusters and Poltergeist when I was like six. Anna Faris. I'll say Anna Faris. You'll say it. We'll believe it. Because I like her. She's a pretty. She's she's nice. She's friendly. She'd call you back. Maybe. Maybe not. She'd say sorry, but I couldn't. <laughs> I I got your your message, but I couldn't. I'll leave it on your machine. It's like what? Oh, I just missed you. I'm still uh, talking to you. Can't right believe now. it. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so you're fully into everything. So of all of those, I guess you're not fearful of any of those. Not really. Not really, no. What about uh, you played some of these what, games though, right? Like you you played Dead by Daylight with, with me. That was fun. Yeah, That's not scary. It's not scary. Well, it's true. well, you're scared of um getting caught, like a little ah, the jump yeah, scare. The jump, jump scare, scare. happens. Jump scare is cool. Jump scare gives me a little whoo, whoo, gotcha. Whoa, whoa! I didn't, you didn't expect that. You didn't win. Like when you win, people shit on you because they're like, "Oh, you're just camping out. You're like making sure you." Cheated. Oh, yeah. I can't believe you did that. Oh my god, it's unbelievable! I can't believe you did that. Oh my god, I'm gonna report you. My dad works for Sony. We're gonna hack your account, and we're gonna put so many bad things in your account. I won. Would you just say I won? What about you? Have a smirk or smile? No, you don't. Left for Dead. You play that? You played that, right? With you, we had the, the. Do you remember the one where um you nobody in the party gets hit? Oh. And you beat a thing, and yeah, the, the everyone's throwing up. You have to hide in the closet. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took us like eight tries of like, and we had. Who do you think were teammates? It was someone else we knew, and a, a fourth party. I feel I like bet we my did. buddy Mitch was in it on it because he like. Yeah, it was Mitch. It was Mitch. It was Mitch. We're all. I remember hiding in the bathroom, and they're all coming up the steps. Yeah, and we're all and they, firing uh, shotguns dude, rapidly. The, um, the oh. dudes who throw up on you were just hiding around the corner, and you'd be like ninety nine percent through the game, and just it would throw up in the room, and then it'd be like, oh, oh. one of you got hit, and it'd be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Or how about the uh, the dudes who were uh, like super strong and look like the thing, like the big hulky yeah, dudes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great. Or the witches. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they did that right. Yeah. Uh, that was a good game. Yeah, Smarter Smiles, that bathtub. I remember did sitting in the bathtub. Did you play the new... In the bathtub. And there's just like a wave. There's so many zombies just dying in the doorway. They're piling so up. So many. That was a real good game. Yeah. The, um... Yeah? I forget the exact sentence. Life for dead. Tank. 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 Dots. You go backwards. Tank. Tank. Thank you. This is his name. No, it wasn't what I wanted, but thank you for giving me his name. Mm -hmm. Left for Dead 2. Was it good? Oh, um, did you ever play the new Resident Evil? People said that was scary as hell. Which one? I watched. I played. You're in the, um, the old house. Resident Evil 5, I think it's called. This is like a throwback to the first one. I remember watching the first one with my. Uh... My friend, his older brother, had it, and we would all sit around as he played. The classic, yeah, 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 and then like the door would the shut. Door open. Right, right. That's the, the, the room. Door. The um, no, uh, five was set in like Louisiana. Sorry, I'm picking my nail here. Yeah, stop um, doing that. I have to finish. It's like a no. compulsive thing. All right, I kind of got to the end of it. There we go. That's I hope you all weren't scared. Um. It was set in like the backwoods, in, like white trash area, rural, like no one around. And you go into the house and it's like trash everywhere and garbage everywhere. And like the plates are all covered in gross stuff because they've never been washed. Hmm. The house is nasty. And I guess a zombie infection is going on. And it's a first person game, I think. Mm -hmm. You're like in this house and it's like really good graphics, but it's all dark. And the house is twisted and way bigger than you think and i think zombie uh, somehow sounds zombie. like the first one it's like a remastered version a little bit but it's not a it's not a mansion it's the opposite hmm. like it's a white trash wooden nasty garbage house huh. with like a heavy set old guy and like overall like gene overalls and everything and like okay. he's like okay. harry looks gross and like he probably becomes zombified i don't know i would yeah i would do that so what's your point? Do you have a point? 
You just it like looks, it. It looks scary. Did it come out? When does it come out? It came out two years ago or a year ago. It had really good reviews. That's why I missed it. You did, but now you can get it cheap on discount. Is it multiplayer? Wait. I don't know. They did a multiplayer version of uh, Resident Evil that I played through. That was kind of... Oh, yeah. My buddy point. talked about that. It, it was, was like, yeah, yeah, okay, but not the same game. Five. Five was released in 2009. Okay, it wasn't five. Six? How many iterations of Resident Evil are there? I thought five was going to be it, but no. I don't know. Somebody who doesn't watch horror movies. <laughs> How would you know? Okay, oh crap, there's uh, about... Oh man, there's like a dozen of them. Really? Oh, I gotta there's finish this now. Evil... I got it. Yeah, there's too many. What's the newest Seven. one? Seven. They did a remastered of two. Mm -mm. Could spend a whole episode on this shit. <laughs> Resident Evil episode. First person... a nice glean on your forehead right there. Thank you. 1440. Damn. You're not going to find it. Resident Evil 7, I think. Hmm. Is it yeah. showing up? I do see it, but I don't see... I can't glean the... Um... When it is, or yeah, the I do see the house aura. though has a little porch. Looks kind of southern. Right. Anyway, I never played it, so everyone's gonna be like, "These guys are idiots." It's not like that. I looked for oh, multiplayer yeah. and it didn't show up. All right, maybe it's not. How much is it on Steam? Thirty bucks still. Come on, what that's too we? much. All right, all right. Well, we're gonna call it a night there, I think. Well, folks, <laughs> now that we know Resident Evil is not. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> 30 bucks. All right. All right. Well, folks, we thank you for being scared with us. Boo. Oh, that was our scare. I'm scared. Did you start downloading something? No, I did not. The internet's going to hell, and you know it. Mm. Yeah, I see that now. I don't You're know. working on the pornography episode? I'm getting close. Anyway. Well, folks, we're going to end it right now on a strong note. The way we always love to finish these <laughs> yeah. episodes. Like a little recap. Strong, Let's talk about actual... all the movies we talked about. There's Dead Rising, Resident Evil, uh, World War II. There's a recap Halloween. here for... We talked about Dead Halloween. Space. And Halloween, The folks. Event Horizon. Gaelic and Celtic at the, the same time. Yep. No Deep one's Rising. really sure. Pumpkin plus Skull is a jack-o'-lantern, essentially, Sl right? Yeah. Slender Man. Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Slender Woman. We're not prejudiced here. Mike Myers. Michael Myers. The Manto the Mantauk monster found on the New York beach. It was like a corpse oh. that looked really weird and it was videotaped and no one knew what it was. Turned out it was a decomposed raccoon, so not a monster. No, that's yeah. great. Just summon that up for everybody. Loch Ness uh, was just a guy floating upside down. No, it wasn't. Yeah. You know about that? No. No. Dinosaurs Picture? didn't exist. The bones were put there by God. The fool humans. <laughs> the test. <laughs> the test. The test, man. Are you afraid of the dark? Good, good, no, good show. Good show. Salute your shorts. Um, hey, dude. We talked about a lot. War of the Worlds. Independence Day. War of the Worlds. One of our favorites. We also talked a little bit about something called... A Quiet Place. Halloween and A Quiet Place. And All Saints Day. Shout out All Saints. Every single one of them. Yeah. I think we summed it up pretty good right there. For <laughs> yeah, we're all over the place. <laughs> Holy Thanks shit. For... Wow, thanks for tuning in, folks. This is crazy. Yeah. I can't believe I get to touch all these lives. You know? We wish. But then again, we like them. We like them a lot. All the lives. Souls. Oof. I touch them all. A lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good night.